Are you looking for some answers for the ASVAB? Great, because I'm about to walk through an entire practice test for the mathematical knowledge. Now remember, mathematical knowledge is one of the two major math tests on the ASVAB. The other one's arithmetic reasoning, and I already have a full video on that. But this video today is gonna to be focusing purely on mathematical knowledge. With that, let's go ahead and dive straight into question number one. Number one on the mathematical knowledge ASVAB test says, if we plug in X equals eight into this equation, then what is Y equal to? So I'm literally just gonna plug in the eight here. So eight squared is gonna give me 64 divided by four and then minus two. So if we do divided by four, that should end up giving me 16 minus two. And then we're gonna do 16 minus two, which is gonna give me 14. This answer is A. The cube of five is what? So the cube of five just means that we're taking five times five times five. So five times five is 25, times another five is gonna give us 125, meaning the answer to number two for the ASVAB is A. So number three on the ASVAB says 2.5 times three to the third power. Let's start off with that three to the third power. That's gonna be three times three times three. That means that three times three is gonna give me nine times another three is gonna be 27. Now I need to multiply that by the 2.5. Because we don't have a calculator here, I wanna do this in two steps. 27 times two is gonna give me 54. And the 0.5, half of 27 is 13. 0.5. So if I multiply by 2.5, what I'm actually getting as an answer here is these two combined. So if I add those together, that's going to give me 67.5, which is answer C. Working on number four here on the ASVAB, it says the fourth root of 16 is, and it gives you these options. So fourth root means that you are taking some number and multiplying it by itself four times to get 16. Now here's the deal right now, four times four is 16 right off the bat, and that would only be two of them, so that's too big. And three times three is nine, times another three is 18, so that's gonna to be too big. And one times itself over and over and over is just always gonna be one, so that has to be out. Meaning our answer has to be two, but let's check it. Two times two is four, times another two is eight, times another two would be 16. So our answer is D. What's the equation of the line that passes through these two points? Now, there's two ways of going about doing this. You could actually do the algebra work, find the slope, and do all of that. Or you could go about plugging each one of these in here and getting your answer. Let's do the equation route. This is a y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is your y-intercept. They already give us the y-intercept, that negative one, because remember, a y-intercept is just when your x is zero. So they already gave us that b is negative one. So right off the bat, I know the answer here is either A or C. I would say since it has to be of Y equals MX plus B, your answer is A right off the bat. Let's double check that though by finding the slope. Slope would be rise over run. So usually you do that with Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. In other words, the difference between your Y's and your X's. So three minus negative one. So three minus negative one would give you a total of four. And then on the bottom, we have two minus zero, which would be two. Four divided by two is just two, so our slope here is two, meaning that we do indeed have two x minus one. Number six on the ASVAB says 12 yards plus 14 feet divided by five equals which of these? Well, first off, you probably need to know that one yard is equal to three feet. So that means if I'm converting these 12 yards into feet, I'm just gonna multiply by three, and 12 times three is gonna give me 36. Now I do still need to add that 14, and don't forget, we are still dividing at five in the end. So when we're looking at this, 36 plus the 14 is gonna give me a total of 50. 50 divided by five is just gonna be 10. Our answer here is C. Number seven on the ASVAB says, x cubed times x to the fourth power, what is this? This is an exponent rule question, and it turns out that if you have the same base, in this case x, and you are multiplying them together, you are able to just add the exponents together, meaning that this answer is just x to the seventh, which is going to be answer D. Number eight on the ASVAB is just asking you to distribute these guys out. Now I say distribute, some people know it as foil, but here's what we gotta do. We gotta do the first guy times the first one, First guy times the back one, 
first back one times the first back one times the back and then we combine like terms and get all of our stuff here well x times x right off the bat is going to give me x squared and i know four times the two in the back is going to give me a positive eight so that means we're already looking at either this guy here or this guy down here now from there let's find that middle term four times the x would give me four x and two times that x would give me two x now both of those are positive so if we add those two together that gives us a middle term of six x meaning our final answer here is D. Number nine on the ASVAB is kind of looking at a scientific notation question because it says 10 to the third power and they expect you to know what that means. That essentially just means that whatever this is, you're going to move the decimal place to the right three times because anything times 10 is essentially adding a zero or moving your decimal to the right, however you want to say that. If it's negative, then the exponent, if the exponent's negative, you would move it to the left that many times. So in this case, if I have 1.5 and I'm multiplying it by 10 to the third power, I'm going to move that decimal place over three times. So the first one just puts it on the other side of the five, but then I got to fill in a zero and a zero here, meaning our final answer for number nine is C. Which of the following is a prime number is number 10 for the ASVAB, and it says here 27, 11, 8, and 4. Well, I know that 9 times 3 gives me 27, and prime means that the only number that multiplies to give you that is 1 and the number. The answer is here B for number 11, because you can't multiply anything together to give you that except for 11 and 1. For 8, it would be 4 and 2 that makes that not work, and for 4, it would be 2 and 2 that make that not work. What's the mode of the following series of numbers is number 11 on the ASVAB. It says 4, 4, 8, 8, 8, 10, 10, 12, 12. Now remember the mode is one of our three measures of center. Probably the worst since it can be anywhere in your thing, but mode just means it's the number that appears the most. In this case, the number that appears the most is eight because there's three of them, which means our answer is B. For number 12 on the ASVAB, it says if A is equal to 4, then A cubed divided by A is equal to what? So here's the deal. If we're dividing by A, that means essentially we're able to cancel out one of these A's with one of the ones on top. So A to the third minus that one we're canceling out is now just going to give us A squared. And if we're plugging in 4, this is really just asking you, what is 4 squared? Well, 4 times 4 gives me 16. Answer D. Number 13 on the mathematical knowledge for the ASVAB says solve five factorial. So what this means, factorial, the little explanation point here, it means you take that number and you multiply it by every number underneath it until you get down to the number one. So if I do five times four, that's going to give me 20, times the three is going to give me 60, times the two is going to give me 120. Then times one keeps me at 120, so our final answer here is C. So we are halfway there. Go ahead and take a break for a second stretch, and then we're going to dive right back into questions. And while you're taking a break, go ahead and hit that like button below to let me know you're finding this helpful, and leave some comments about areas where you're still struggling or need more help so that I know what to do for my next video. Number 14 on the ASVAB is just some quick math here. 900 times 2 is going to give me 1,800. Then we have to divide that by 6. Well, 6 goes into 18 three times, and then we have those two zeros, meaning our final answer here is B. Number 15 on the ASVAB says if x is equal to 2, then what is x to the x times x? So in other words, we're looking at 2 to the second power times 2. So 2 to the second power is just 4 times another 2 would end up giving me 8, which is answer A. Number 16 on the ASVAB says this whole thing is equal to this times x. Then that means x is equal to what? Well, let's go ahead and look closely at this. 5 plus 1 is 6 times 6 divided by 3, which is 2, times 8 minus 5, which is 3, equals 3 plus 3, which is 6, times x. So let's go ahead and do these over here first. Well, right off the bat, I can cancel out these 6's on both sides. Those can go away, and that's going to leave me with 2 times 3 equals x, 2 times 3 is 6, so that's going to give me d as a final answer. Number 17 on the ASVAB says that the square root of 49 times the square root of 64 is what? This is testing to see if you know common square roots. Square root of 49 is just 7, and the square root of 64 is 8. So really this question is just asking you, what is 7 times 8? And the answer to that is 56. Number 18 on the ASVAB is asking you, which of the following fractions is the largest? Now, the first thing I like to do is see if there's any close resemblances that I can cut out right away. So looking to see if any of these are above or below 50, percent or 0.5 should be pretty quick. Um, 2.5 would be half of 5, so this is under a half, so that guy's out. 
three is under four, which is half of eight, so that guy's out. So really, I'm just going to compare between the two of these. So I'm looking at seven over 10 versus 13 over 16. Some people may be able to quickly see what the answer is already, but in case you don't, let's talk about how you would find out. We gotta find a least common denominator out of these two. In this case, I believe an easy one to do would be 80. So if I multiply both the top and bottom by eight, here, it would give me a bottom number of 80. 7 times 8 is 56 out of 80. And if I do the same thing over here, 16 times 5 gives me 80. So what is 13 times 5 would be the question, and that's going to be a total of 65, meaning that 65 is bigger than that, which means our 13 out of 16 is the largest fraction we have here. Looking at number 19, it says, if two plus x is greater than or equal to four, then x is greater than or equal to what? This is solving an inequality, and you can treat it the same way as an equation, so I'm just gonna subtract two from both sides, and that's gonna end up giving me, oh, I should put it there, x is greater than or equal to, four minus two is two. So, if I'm looking at these, if this, then x must be greater than or equal to, two. Option B. For number 20 on the ASVAB mathematical knowledge, it says, if a circle has a radius of 12 feet, what's the circumference most nearly? So what is the circumference of a circle? It is known as the diameter times pi. That's what gives you the circumference. So in this case, it's going to be 12 is the radius. So double that will give us the diameter. So double of 12 is going to be 24. And then we have to multiply that by pi. So remember, pi is about 3.1 four if you want to go that route. So what is 24 times three? That's going to give us 60. Well, no, we got to carry the one. So 72. So the answer must be larger than 72. The only answer larger than 72 is option C. Number 21 on the ASVAB mathematical knowledge is saying that an aquarium measures 16 inches long, 8 inches deep, and 18 inches high. What's the volume? Well, you just need to remember that for a rectangular prism, the volume is going to be your length times width times height. So in this case, that means we're going to be doing 16 times eight times 18. Now, if you didn't know, 16 times eight would be our starting point, and that's going to give us 128. We then have to multiply that by our 18. So doing this the long way out, let's see, if I did it by 20 and subtracted two of those, that's going to end up giving me 2,304, which is option A. You should have been able to get that pretty easily, though, just by guessing once you got to this point, because obviously 128, 42, and 288 are way too small to be the answer to this guy right here. So answer A is your final. Number 22 on the ASVAB says, what kind of triangle is this? Well, a right triangle means that it has a 90 degree angle in it, which isn't possible here because these are all smaller than 90 degrees. Obtuse means that it has an angle that is wider than 90 degrees, which that's also not the case here. An equilateral triangle means that all three are the same, and isosceles means only two of them are the same. So in this case, C is going to be our answer because all three of these angles and all three of these sides look to be the same. Number 23 says the sum of the measures of the angles of a trapezoid is blank. So remember, a trapezoid just means that two sides of this thing is parallel, so we'll say this guy's parallel to this side. Really, all we need to know is that this is a four-sided figure. And there's a formula that says if you take the number of sides minus two and multiply that by 180, it will give you the total sum of the interior angles of that figure. So in this case, we have a four-sided figure. Four minus two is just two, and two times 180 is 360, which which means our answer is A. Number 24 on the ASVAB is another definition question for mathematics. We're looking at two angles here, and it wants to define them in one of these ways. So one and two are, well, together they make a right angle, but individually they are not, because that means this is 90 degrees right here, which is what this box means, it's 90 degrees. But we do know that if two angles add up to 90 degrees, they are called complementary. That is the word vocab for that. So these two add to 90 degrees, meaning they are complementary. Number 25 on the ASVAB says convert 24% to a fraction. So the easiest way to go about converting percents to fractions is you just put that number over 100. Since we don't have a calculator, I'm just going to go ahead and keep cutting this in half to get it down. That means cutting 24 in half is going to give me 12. 100 in half is going to be 50. Cut those both in half. 12 in half is 6. And 50 in half is 25. Five. That means that our final answer, because these can't be cut down anymore, is going to be 6 over 25, which is option A.
Congratulations, guys. You made it all the way to the end. I wish you best of luck on your test and hope you get the score you're looking for. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni, and this has been your help on the ASV.